peeps, it's Grey White making it happen again today with some more Portal Knights. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day myself. I'm very excited about today's video because I've made a lot of progress on our build, our player versus player versus environment sort of weird, uh, weird game thing that we're making. I'm not sure how to describe it exactly. We'll figure out a cool name for it and a good way to describe it. Let me know if you guys have any sweet ideas. Uh, thanks, first off, to all the awesome comments in the last video. You guys showed up with a lot of really great ideas and I did incorporate some of them already and we'll kind of go over that. Uh, in particular, a shout out to Topcat with a fantastic comment suggesting that blue has blue turrets and red has red turrets and I made I made the levers match up in color too. So we, we did make some cool changes. Also, I didn't realize this until literally just now before starting this video that Topcat is actually, I, I believe, uh, a dev for Portal Knights and uh, that's so cool. Thank you so much because we're going to have a video in the future where we look at Topcat's workshop shop items because Topcat has shown us how to do logic items using this cool like adventure world thing. It's really cool. You guys are going to love it, I think. I learned a lot from doing it myself and I think you guys will too. That's why we're going to do a little uh, group tour of it. But let's go ahead and take a look at how things are going around here. So you guys already know uh, pretty much the basics of how the game is going to work. You start off, you pick your side, you get into your lobbies, you drop down and you go into your control room and basically uh, there's going to be seven enemies on either side. As you kill one it's going to spawn one on the other person's side so it's kind of like this balancing act of seven enemies on either side uh so if you kill all the enemies on your side the other the other team will have 14 enemies on their side and so it's kind of like bouncing back and forth when you kill them each kill gets you one point um I, I don't remember if I had this quite sh showing properly in the last video, but I, I have it set up now where what we'll do is we'll have these lights will turn on for every enemy killed. So if you kill seven enemies, it's going to light these up. As soon as you hit seven enemies killed, it's going to unlock this first door. And the way this is going to work is that... Whoop, zoop, zerp, zerp. That is going to be there. Once you hit seven enemies killed, you can unlock that. And it's going to uh, let you spend those seven points on this button. And I have a sign here that tells us, turn fire walk on for 20 seconds. So if we hit this button, if you get the seven points, you'll hit that. These lights will turn back off because you'll have spent these seven points, which I'll actually do with logic blocks. We'll probably do a tutorial on that. But you can see for 20 seconds, the fire walk is going to turn on. It'll damage the enemies walking across. And then it'll turn off eventually after, well, 20 seconds. That, that equates to four total um, firewalk uh, uses basically it, it triggers four times and then it turns off I'm thinking we, we'll have to test the game once it's actually up and running we'll have to to I, I think we'll probably lower that down to maybe just once because that's kind of overpowered I think being able to run four times because that'll clear a whole line you'll you'll, you'll kill the grunts right, right away with just one use of that which I think is too much I think maybe just having it fire once maybe a, a more balanced solution but oh yeah um, I don't think I mentioned Topcat. So uh, Topcat suggested using blue items for the blue team, red items for the red team. So I did do that, and we're going to do more decorative stuff, guys. So I know it looks a little plain right now with just the... Um uh, what are these called? Titanium blocks. It, we'll, we'll have it look more interesting. We'll get it decorated. Um, blue is going to look a lot more blue. Red is going to look a lot more red. But I did go ahead and implement that suggestion. We have blue ice turrets over here for the blue team. Red fire turrets over here for the red team. The red team has... Uh, red levers. The blue team has blue levers. So, you know, we're doing a little bit. We'll make it look a lot better by the time we're done. But um, that, that was a really good suggestion. I really do appreciate that. Awesome, awesome idea. So the uh, next thing that we have is so you can use the firewalk for 20 seconds. If you get 14 kills, I have this set up now. Disable enemy turrets for 20 seconds. This is another one that might be a little bit overpowered. We can press that button now. I have that triggered. So for 20 seconds... This door will be closed, so if the red team tries to fire, they just, it won't even go through. The door blocks it. So that's a cool way that we, we've incorporated like a, like a like an ability that you can spend points on so you can disable enemy turrets, which you might want to do for when your team is trying to go and run across their, their, their um, line, basically. Uh, the last one of these that we have set up is this right here. Kill enemy players in control room. This one's... Pr I'm proud of this one. Hit that button. It's already rigged up. So it's working perfectly. And that'll shoot for like 10 seconds, I think. And I believe... 
I don't believe any player is going to survive that. You can see it's just a rendering issue. It goes pretty far down. It doesn't reach quite all the way, so we're going to have to figure out a solution to that, but it's it sure is working. I do also have these buttons working now too, so I can send the enemies with the uh, the green buttons on either side. They do run back and forth just by pressing the button. One pretty cool thing about the way we have it set up right now, I I um I did okay. So kind of uh, going back to our discussion about Top Cat's um, his his, his uh, workshop content that shows you how logic blocks work. I really should have looked at that much sooner. I would have saved myself so much trouble with the uh, the waypoints. Although they still don't work perfectly for me. Um, I, it turns out they have to be within 20 blocks of the next waypoint in order for them to work properly. I did try doing that. I, I put like uh, more waypoints in between and tried creating a circle, but it was still causing issues with the game. It wasn't working quite properly for me. So um, I'm going to stick with the solution I have right now where we actually, instead of having them automatically run back and forth, you have to press the button to trigger their movement. I think that just adds one more reason for you to be running back and forth and doing things and, and having something to do so it's not a boring game for you you but um yeah that, that workshop content is fantastic you guys i think you'll really like it but um that's all set up and then one other cool thing i did with the uh the logic blocks is i set up this this cool little thing check this out so once you get your so you have 7 14 21 and then 28 points once you get to 28 points um you can this this sends the enemies obviously once you get to 28 points it's going to unlock this button now what this button does is it drops you down to this level where you'll start running to get to the other person's line and i set it up so that the lights start flashing so it's kind of like a signal to the other team to say hey pay attention there's a player on their way they're going to try and run through your line and hit the button so you should be ready to either you know spend money on your firewalk or uh, be ready to use your turrets to try and kill them, whatever you're going to do. Um, I think we're also, what, something else we're going to do is that having these fire, um, these, excuse me, having these turrets on the lines is super cool. I like it a lot, and having the, the, the levers hooked up to them makes it really fun, but I think we need some more variety in the items that we have, so I think we might put some of these, these uh, ice towers in there. You guys know the rotating ice towers? Those are the ones I'm talking about. So these ones are pretty cool because they actually just fire a constant. Uh, they, they fire constantly. It's not like a, a one-time thing, so if we hook this up, I can show you really quick here start firing repeatedly turn that on so those just shoot a big old line of attacky stuff they just keep shooting and i think that's pretty cool i think that would be a good idea because that way you have some kind of one when your turrets get de destroyed you have some way to attack which i think is is, is useful but um I, you know i'm not totally sure how we're going to incorporate that we could also incorporate some some like some uh what are those called Trap doors, yes, trap doors with lava underneath them, so you could potentially um, snag an enemy trying to run through your uh, your line with with a trap door, and that'd be like an instant kill if you can time it correctly and catch them. But we'll see. We're, I'm not sure about that. We are going to have to. Uh, so I, I've been doing some thinking about how we're gonna uh, avoid cheating in this game because one issue that I've come across with this game is that we have uh, we don't have to leave a gap here, but it's very hard to see the the enemies if i put like a uh, grate in the way you know like one of these dungeon grate things like these things if i put those up here it's really hard to see the line it's hard to see across to the other team and it's just not a great experience so i ended up going with these half walls so that means there's a gap right here you guys can see the blue outline there's a block empty and then there's a block so there is a gap right here so if people come into the game with like scrolls of teleportation if they come in as a druid with the worm ability the worm transformation they can kind of trans transport sort of like across the ground over there so there are ways for people for people to cheat which is unfortunate i could fix that by closing this in but if i close it in it's gonna take away from the 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 your, your visual your, your ability to see the line and it's just not going to be a good experience so we might just have to you know work on the trust system and say people shouldn't cheat but i'm going to do my best to uh to force people to play fairly so we'll probably end up closing the lines in too because once you get to the line if somebody had rockets for example it'd be lame if the player could like use rockets to to fly across here and avoid all the turrets that seems really cheaty to me the it, the fun part is is kind of playing this back and forth with the players up here trying to avoid getting hit while they try and fire at you basically i think that sounds like a, like a blast and 
Uh, pun intended. <laughs> I think it sounds pretty cool. And uh, it would be lame to have people cheating with like rockets or wings or double jump or that kind of stuff. But um, so, okay. So I did get this put together too. Guys, this part was a real pain in the keister. So I put together the uh, the part where you run you run run to the other person's line. I had a really hard time making this fair. So you figure this. You, we got red lights flashing so the other team knows that I'm on my way. I had the worst time getting this to work. I I creating a path where where we swap sides with the other team's path without being unfair and causing like like extra distance to travel for one team over the other was was really difficult. But I got it to work. So they kind of like they kind of meet in the middle, pass each other, and then go up and down respectively, and then kind of pass each other again and go back up. So I, I think I got it to work pretty well. So there shouldn't be really any unfairness in, in which pick, side you pick. They should be pretty much 100% um, the exact same distance to run to get to the line. So I, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on in this video before we wrap things up is there is some unfortunate news that I ran into in my stream the other night. Some pretty unfortunate news regarding how enemies spawn. So... I can actually show this to you guys really quick. And I'm really happy that Top Cat is watching this video because if you are a dev, um, I sent them a message about this. I hope this is a bug because this is really... Guys, my development on this game, this mini game, is coming to a pretty much a, a, a halt because of this issue I've run into. Um, actually, this is an issue I've found is, has affected my other games that I've created like the Arena, Grunt Busters, Hungry Hungry Portal Knights. All of these games I've made for Portal Knights... Um, have been kind of bricked in a way like they, they don't work properly anymore because of this issue previously the way the game worked is that enemies would okay so let's let's take a look with the logic stuff so here's an enemy on top of a firewalk i have this enemy hooked up to this torch so that when he's killed that torch well when he forwards a signal that torch should turn on so um so i can i can keep track of when he dies based on when he sends a signal so normally what happens is if we have this lever is hooked up to the enemy. When I turn this lever on, he spawns. That's what happens. He he gets so when when we load the game and he's not there. When I turn this lever on, he spawns in. And then what the way it used to work is when he's killed, he would he would send a signal. So when I kill him, this torch will turn on as long as this is turned on as long as the lever is still turned it uh, turned on so as long as whatever signal caused him to spawn as long as that signal is still a uh, uh, one still active and he dies then he will forward that signal um if this is off and he dies he just wouldn't send a signal at all there would be no signal sent when he dies the way it were and, and the, the, the what was nice about that is that i could have something like a timer spawn this enemy and then when he's killed, I could have him send a signal back to the timer to turn the timer off. So what would happen is when he dies, he sends a really, really fast uh, pulse. So he sends this really fast signal that just blinks for a second. That And I can use that as a trigger to count points for this game that we're making. I can use that as a way to keep track of if an enemy has died so that I can give you points to spend on these, these buttons, these abilities. But what's happened is that after the most recent update, again, I'm not sure if this is something they changed on purpose to make things work for their relic defense because I know they do use these logic items when they're making relic defense because a message I received from, I believe it was, top cat uh, it may have been another dev i'm not entirely sure but a message i received from them said that we used the waypoints a lot when we were making the relic defense i believe they were referring to um sending one waypoint to multiple waypoints um so that there are multiple paths that enemies can take so I believe I, I hope this is a this is a an, just a, like a bug that needs fixing so that we can actually finish this game and make it because if this is if the, if it's not unfortunately this game has come to an end I, I can't actually finish it there's not a way for me to make it work that I can think of if you guys can think of a way let me know because the way things work now so I've already described to you how things used to work with enemy spawns but now the way it works is totally different what happens is I can turn this lever on to spawn the enemy right I can turn the lever on to spawn the enemy, and then whether I leave this on or not, whether I leave it on or turn it off, and the enemy's already spawned, when I kill him, he's going to send a signal, and it doesn't turn off. 
as far as I can see, there's not a way to turn off that signal. There's not a way to stop him from forwarding that signal. And the, the bad thing about this is that now that he's sending a signal, if I try and turn this on again, he won't respawn. So after I kill him, I can't spawn him again. So this enemy can only exist in the game once it's been loaded one time. There's not a way for me to continue to bring him back to life so that we can score more points. So that that one problem has caused real issues with Again, all the games I've made so far, because this is this is something I use very frequently to keep track of when an enemy has been killed, so we can give points for that. That's how I count when an enemy has been killed in Hungry Hungry, Hungry Portal Knights, and um, and with uh, spawning enemies in the arena, Uko's Gladiator Arena. And when I made that, we have it set up so there's a bonus around at the end where we spawn all of the enemies in for all four players, but it we can't now because those enemies, some of them are dead, and it'll just go into this endless loop now. So. It's really unfortunate. I, I really hope that I, I sent him a message. Hopefully we get it fixed soon. Um, hopefully it is something that needs to be fixed and not just the way things work now. I'm really optimistic that's the case. And you know what? Just one last thing on the on the off chance that uh, one of the devs is actually watching this. I do want to point one thing out. Um, I haven't tested this yet in the since the update, but I'll, you know what? We'll do it live right now. I'm going to toss down a... Um, a uh, pressure plate and we're also gonna throw down a enemy really quick <laughs> now we're gonna test this live because um, it used to be before the update I oh, okay so sorry some background here while I'm loading it in I went to the uh, the workshop content for top cat that I was telling you guys about and I noticed in in the workshop content it says that both players and enemies will trigger pressure plates. Now, this is a problem I had in Hungry Hungry Portal Nights where enemies were not triggering pressure plates, and it would make my life much, much, much easier. There's so many things, so much potential if enemies did tr trigger pressure plates. It really would be super awesome. So let's just test this really quick because they were not triggering pressure plates. Come over here. Okay, come on. Yeah, he's not triggering that, that pressure plate. That's unfortunate. So I, it sounds like they're supposed to. I assume that this one is a bug because it sure is. Okay, you're very difficult to show this. Would you quit hopping around? There it is. Yeah, he went straight through it. So he's not he's not triggering that. So that's just another thing I wanted to point out. Hopefully that's something we can get fixed too because that would make games like Hungry Heart Portal Knights so much less logic block intensive. Oh goodness. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys like the way that the uh, the Line War game is coming along. I've really made a lot of progress on it. I'm excited to finish it. Hopefully, we can do that soon. Um, I'm probably not going to make a lot of video updates on it until that, that enemy spawning issue gets fixed. Because, I, I, again, it's just... I, 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 there's not much point in working on it if I'm not going to be able to do it, you know? If we're not going to be able to make it work. Um... But yeah, I, I, that's pretty much all I got for today, guys. So if you have other ideas, let me know if you have other ideas for cool games we could make in Portal Knights because uh, this logic block, block stuff is some of my favorite stuff to work with. I, I, I'm not a programmer by by profession. I don't do a lot of this stuff, and it's like it's like it's like discovering or like learning a new language. It's so fun. I, I just enjoy it so much. It's such a pleasure to, to work on, and it's a real challenge. It really makes me think. I spend like at work when I'm when I'm at my my day job and I'm working. I just like. I'm, I'm doing things mindlessly while I'm thinking about things I could do with logic blocks. It's so fun. Oh, it's such a blast. Guys, this game's going to be big. I, I'm telling you, this game's going to blow up. If they keep giving us stuff that we can build things with, ah, I, I, there's just endless potential with Portal Knights, and I'm very excited about it. I hope you guys are too. But, um, hey, make sure you like this video if you liked it. You know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd appreciate to have you. And leave a fantastic comment if you have suggestions for a name for the game, ideas for other games we can make. Um, maybe a solution if you know a way that we can fix the problem that I'm dealing with with enemy spawns anything anything at all but you guys have been a pleasure as always and I hope you do have just the best kind of day I'll see you later dudes